All right, let's look at special triangles. Uh, there's two types of special triangles. There's the 45-45-90 and the 30-60-90. Um, <clears throat> we'll start with the 45-45-90. And, uh, well, that's the one we're going to talk about first. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this square right here. Now it's a square, so that means we can complete this picture even more and put a 1 on every single side because on a square, all sides are, are equal, are congruent. Um, they're not equal, they're, they're congruent. So let's find uh, this x right here. That x is, stands for the length of this diagonal line, which is just going from one vertice to the next vertice uh, to form a right triangle. So in this right triangle, um, what is uh, this missing uh, side right here for this right triangle? Uh, to do that, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll say 1 squared plus 1 squared equals x squared. 1 squared is 1, and 1 squared is 1 that equals x squared. So that means x squared equals 2. Now to find out the value of x, we have to do inverse operations so that we can get rid of this squared so it just says x. The square root is the inverse, so those cancel out, so we're left with x. But whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other, so we have x equals, I'm sorry, not x, radical 2. Uh, we can use this triangle, uh, we can use this right here, and this triangle that we just found the values, uh, the, the missing side of, to um, help us solve other problems by using proportions. Um, <coughs> So we can say 1, 1, radical 2. Those are the, the missing sides there. And this is 45 degrees. And that's 45 degrees. That's why it's called the 45, 45, 90. Now, 45, 45, 90 we can um, be shown to you in different ways. It could just be written like this. Whoops. With uh, two um, arcs like that. Those arcs mean that these two angles this one and this one are congruent, meaning they have the same measure. And the reason why we can do that is because we know that this marking means that this angle is 90 degrees. And we know that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So if we put 180 here and we just take away 90 degrees, that leaves us with 90 degrees. So that means this angle and this angle have to add up to 90 degrees. And if they're the both they're both the same measure, says this little arc right here, then that means they have to be um, 45, because only 45 and 45 will add up to 90. So this is one way you can see a 45, 45, 90. Another way uh, might be where you just have um, a 45 degrees right here and then a 90 degrees right there. If you know that this is 45 degrees, then and this is 90 degrees, then this one, this last angle has to also be 45 degrees. So that's that's another way you can see uh, 45, 45, 90. The last way would um, have markings like this. Okay, these markings mean that this side right here and this side right here are congruent. And if those two sides are congruent, then you know that this has to be 45 degrees and this has to be 45 degrees. It's a 45, 45, 90. <clears throat> uh, there's different reasons why you know that those are 45 degrees. Uh, one could be um, you know what an isosceles triangle is. An isosceles triangle says that if you have two legs that are congruent, then your two ang base angles are congruent. Um, you might also just remember this triangle right here, which is the one that we made uh, earlier. So these three um, representations of 45, 45, 90 triangles are different. Well, you can see these in different problems. Um, so let's uh, take the 45, 45, 90 and see how we can uh, apply it to a problem. Um, so this one right here says determine the missing side lengths of the triangle below. So as you can see, our first step right here tells us that we should draw our similar triangle. So Oh, that's an ugly triangle. Um, so here's our similar triangle. We know that this is a 45 degrees right here. This is 1, 1, and this is radical 2. Uh, now, because this is similar, um, we can set up proportions. And we know it's similar because it has these tick marks on it. These tick marks tell us that this side and this side are equal. If those sides are equal, then we know that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle.
And because all of the, um, actually, all because two of the angles match up, then we know that these are similar triangles. Um, if two of the angles match up, that means all three of the angles match up. So um, to set up our proportion, what we do is we look at the corresponding sides. 8 matches up with radical 2, A matches up with 1, and B matches up with 1. Okay, so what we do is we set up um, ratios. So 8 uh, is matched up with uh, radical 2. Uh, the A is matched up with 1. And we'll do the B in a minute. <clears throat> but I want you to notice something. This is important. These two numbers right here are related to each other. Why? Because they are corresponding sides. And this 8 and this A are related to each other. Why? Because they're on the same triangle. So that's something that I do whenever I set up a proportion is I make sure that these are related and I make sure that these are related. And if that's true, then that means these should also be related and these should also be related. So they're all related to each other. And I say that because there's different ways to set up a proportion. This is one way. And I'll finish solving that one, but I want to show you another way. We could have written it like this. We could have said 8 over A, 8 over A, because these are related, because they're on the same triangle. But then on the other one, I would put 2 over 1, or radical 2 over 1. And I put the radical 2 on, or on top because it's related to the 8. So this proportion right here would also give us the same answer. So there's different ways to write the proportion. Um, <coughs> let's uh, go ahead and solve this one. To solve it, we're going to use cross-multiplying. Uh, or multiply that times that and that times that, uh, which would give us 8 equals a radical 2, a times radical 2. Now to find a, we just have to get the a alone. So we're going to um, divide by radical 2 from both sides. Uh, so we get a equals 8 radical 2. Now some of you guys might have seen that right away right here, just because a divided by 1 is a. So you could have actually skipped that step up there and, and gone straight to this one right here. But I needed to make sure you guys saw uh, cross multiplication. Now to get rid of the the radical on the denominator, because we can't have that, we multiply the bottom and the top by radical 2. <clears throat> on the bottom, we get radical 4. Let's see, uh, I'm running out of space here. Uh, radical 4. And on the top, we get 8 times radical 2. Uh, radical 4 is 2. So now we have a equals, actually, I'm just going to write it right here, a equals. 8 radical 2 over 2 because the square root of 4 is 2. Uh, and we could simplify these two. Uh, 8 divided by 2, which is 4 red 2. Now we don't do anything with this radical 2. And one r way I can show you that is by comparing the radical, um, the radical 2 to a variable. So it's kind of like 8x divided by 2. And if you were to simplify this, you wouldn't do anything with the x. You would just say 8 divided by 2, so you would get 4x. That's why we have 4 rad 2. So that's our a right there. And the cool part about this one is that a is the same measure as b because of those tick marks. And so that means um, b is also 4 radical 2. And this is 4 radical 2. And so those are our two answers. We'll box those. Um, when we did the proportions, awesome. So that's how you would use a 45, 45, 90.